very welcome and thank you for joining us today, Professor Pareto. Um, my name is Dr. Catherine Backus and I'm here today with a professor who is an internationally renowned obesity researcher and clinician and here to answer a few questions for us today. So I guess one of the main questions we have is, what causes obesity? Why is there such an epidemic of weight gain at the moment? There, there is very strong evidence that obesity has a strong genetic predisposition. And this comes from identical twin studies and from adoption studies. Naturally, you need the correct environment to have these genes express what they're meant to do, and mm. that is to help us store energy. Mm. So the recent epidemic is, is a combination of um, the fact that there have always been people that were genetically susceptible, but the environment wasn't mm. there. Now there is and also potentially epigenetic change mm -hmm. which could indicate which means um, environmental factors that can alter gene expression yeah that makes sense so for our patients who are really wanting to to lose weight to improve their health what is the best weight for someone to lose i think to lose weight you need to reduce energy intake below energy expenditure and that makes sense yeah. And there are any number of ways of reducing your food intake. But in 2014, we published a study in the Lancet Diabetes Endocrinology Journal where we showed, I think, the best way to lose weight. Mm -hmm. You see, the problem with the traditional diet approach is that as you lose weight, you become more hungry for reasons that will... Um, I think become obvious. most of our patients can attest to that. Uh, exactly. And whereas what we did, we, we randomised a group of patients into rapid or slow weight loss yeah. and we found that it made no difference to regain. It's yeah. not true that the quicker you lose it, the quicker you put it on. But we found we had more success in the rapid arm of the study compared yeah. to the gradual arm. The secret of the rapid arm was that not only did they eat less, but they were ketotic. Yeah. In other words, we designed the diet to be nutritionally complete mm -hmm. and ketogenic. Now, ketones are uh, products that, uh, of f fat burning. When the liver is burning fat, yeah. it releases ketones into the bloodstream. Yeah. And they suppress hunger two ways, by... Um, directly acting on the brain and then also changing the hunger hormones. So that means it makes it easier for patients who are on a lower energy diet to stick to it because their hunger is suppressed. Correct. Correct. Makes sense. And that's why we had, in that study, we had 18 people dropped out, out of 100 dropped out of the gradual arm, mm -hmm. but in the rapid arm, which was ketotic, yep. uh, only 3 out of 100 dropped out. Makes sense why, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So can you help us to understand why many people can lose weight, but why do we all regain, seem to regain it? Yes. How can we be successful in the long term for keeping weight off? This, um, this always perplexed me. I couldn't understand why um, someone who's motivated loses weight and then yeah. puts it on again. Yeah. So what we did a study that we published in 2011 in the New England Journal of Medicine where we we measured these hunger hormones mm -hmm. that we have in our blood. We, we have 10 hunger horm hunger yeah. regulating hormones yeah. in, the, in the blood, which interestingly there's only one that makes us hungry and nine that take our hunger away. So that one is really powerful? Well, no, well it means that it's actually very hard for the, to stop the brain looking for food. Yeah. Um, and we measured these before people lost weight, after they lost weight and a year later. Mm -hmm. And what we found was that the hormone levels nearly all change in a direction to make you more hungry. Yeah. And then we found that they stayed there a year later. Then we had evidence at three years, now there's evidence at six years, which means that the body, because the weight is genetic, the body does not give up trying to get you back to your genetic set point. Which is good if we're in a time of famine, Correct. but not so good in this era. Correct. It's, it, we, our, our modern environment is 
is up against our biology that was really optimised when we didn't have agriculture, yeah. where we didn't have the industrial revolution yeah. and all and science. So then what would be your top three tips for our patients who are wanting to keep their weight off in the long term? Right. So after achieving weight loss, because we don't expect patients to be ketotic the whole time, um, because it's very hard to stay away from carbs in our yep. society, okay. then what we advise um, patients to do is to following going back onto ordinary food, they need to be mindful of what they put on their plate. Mm -hmm. They need to be aware of what their weight is doing, so it requires regular weighing. Yep. They need to exercise mm -hmm. vigorously, mm -hmm. uh, well vigorously, you exercise to your capacity yep. at least an hour a day. Mm -hmm. And then if, if they regain, despite all of that, if they regain two kilos, they have to go back on the ketotic diet. Yep. And that's a strategy for maintaining weight without medication. The yeah. problem is that eventually grinds you down. Mm, yeah. And so, um, we, my belief is that while you don't need medication to lose weight, it, you probably need it to keep it off. To overcome some of those hormonal signals that Correct. are driving up hunger and, and increasing our desire yes. for food. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Well, thank you for your time today. And thank you for helping to answer some of the questions that we have and for helping us to understand why it's difficult to lose weight, what we can do about it, and ultimately how we can live a healthier life with greater well-being. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Thank you.